Health experts say smokers and vapors are at much higher risk of contracting COVID-19. Smoking damages the lungs and that weakness allows the virus to thrive. Nova Scotia has introduced Canada's toughest anti-vaping legislation by limiting the amount of nicotine levels in e-cigarettes. As Ross Lord reports, that province is leading the charge to protect young people from becoming addicted and suffering harmful side effects. Nova Scotia is capping nicotine content in e-liquids at almost two-thirds lower than many current vaping products. The government says the new limit will protect youth in the province from the harms of nicotine and smoking opponents agree. Having this maximum nicotine level of 20 milligrams per milliliter will make these products less addictive. It's going to reduce youth vaping. It's something that's been in place in the European Union uh, for several years. Nova Scotia is considered a leader in vaping restrictions, but all provinces are taking action. BC is also limiting nicotine to 20 milligrams per milliliter and raising taxes. Alberta is hiking taxes and reviewing smoking legislation. Saskatchewan and Manitoba are restricting the sale of vaping products to people 18 and older. In Ontario, sales are confined to specialty stores. New Brunswick and Newfoundland and Labrador are limiting sales to people 19 and older, and PEI has raised the legal age to buy tobacco and e-cigarettes from 19 to 21, the highest age limit in Canada. In addition to Nova Scotia's new nicotine limits, it was the first in Canada to announce a ban on flavored e-cigarettes and juices. Before the pandemic, vaping was a growing public health issue attributed to dozens of deaths in the U.S. and more than a dozen cases of long illness in Canada. Although medical researchers cannot yet prove vaping is connected to serious illness from COVID-19, they say there are other risks. When someone vapes and emits the secondhand vapor uh, to someone next by, those droplets can transfer to someone else and they can get infected because of that. Doctors say there's still more work to do, like preventing online suppliers from violating the new rules and educating consumers. I really want to see us working on a public awareness campaign um, and educating youth in particular who have really sort of launched into this idea that it's out there and commercially available, therefore it can't be that bad for you. Canadian Vaping Association says it agrees with the cap on nicotine levels, but it wants Nova Scotia's flavour ban amended and taxation restructured. The new restrictions take effect in September. Ross Lohr, Global News. Windsor, Nova Scotia. Some babies born to surrogate mothers in Ukraine have been stranded. Their parents, who are foreigners, can't get into the country because the borders have been closed. Now they're appealing to the Ukrainian government to help end the heartache. Here's Redmond Shannon. Bundles of joy in an age of anxiety. Dozens and dozens of temporary orphans. The full closure of Ukraine's borders means no one knows when these newborns will meet their parents. We try to send parents pictures, says the clinic's owner, but it cannot substitute any direct contact. The company's lawyer says Ukraine is only granting access to parents from countries whose embassies apply for special travel exemptions. And we ask other countries to make an exception from their policy and to let their citizens unite with their children. The parents who have made it are stuck in quarantine for two weeks. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. With most flights cancelled, one Swedish couple needed a private jet. There was an anonymous sponsor that wanted to pay for our flight down to Kiev. Uh, incredible. Yes. <laughs> there are currently 51 babies awaiting the arrival of their parents. But if the lockdown continues as forecast, the number of babies could reach 1,000, according to Ukraine's human rights ombudswoman. She suggested a change in the law to ban foreign surrogacies in Ukraine. Prospective parents go there because of those laws and the cost, significantly less than in Canada. There have been difficulties, challenges, for many parents in various countries with bringing babies home from countries like the Ukraine and Georgia, Russia. That has been an ongoing problem. Cindy Wasser specializes in fertility law and says Canada remains one of the best places for surrogacy. What I would like to point out is for those in the future to consider what and where they will go and what they will do 
to choose something better so they're never in this position again. Ottawa is allowing entry to foreign parents who have a surrogate baby born in Canada as long as they are not showing COVID-19 symptoms. In Ukraine, these tiny miracles remain oblivious to the heartache their parents are feeling. Redmond Shannon, Global News, London.